Hi everyone and welcome back. You might observe that I was not very active lately, that's because my health was not at its strongest, but hopefully that is all behind me. Uh, hopefully I'll be writing and shooting a lot more videos like this one starting with today. For those who don't know, uh, starting with uh, 2019, this is basically my only job. Uh, writing reviews on soundnews.net and filming videos like this one, so I'm doing this all day, every day. With that out of the way, let's focus on today's uh, review unit, which is called uh, HiBF C6, which is their flagship USB dongle. They have uh, three more, but this one is considerably more interesting, and I'll be explaining you why in a few minutes. It's currently for sale, it goes for 279 bucks, down from uh, 299 bucks. And while I know that it's a lot of cash, I do seriously think that it performs uh, on the same level with uh, pricier digital audio players. And while it's small and adorable, I do believe that uh, its sound is nothing but tiny. <music> First of all, I was surprised by the wall unboxing experience, which felt premium from the start. After opening up its cardboard box, you can see a leather box surrounded by foam as an extra protection measure. Inside the leather case, you can spot two smaller compartments, one holding the unit itself and its leather case, and the other compartment holds two USB cables, a short USB-C to USB-C cable used with Android smart devices, and a longer USB Type-A to USB Type-C cable to be used with PCs and laptops. Sadly, there isn't a USB-C to Lightning cable in the package. Luckily, I have such a third-party cable at my disposal, and I can confirm that it partially works with iPhones. Only partially, as once you go past a certain volume level, 27 in my case, then the unit is shutting down. I can only presume that the iPhone cannot provide the power needed for higher voltage swings that will shut down the unit. If you own an iPhone, then I would stop right here and I would start searching for a made for iPhone capable unit, as sadly Hybis FC6 is not one of them. Design wise, as you can see, it's a very, very compact unit. It's uh, machined from a single block of aluminum. Uh, with just a simple glass sheet on its top, so the build quality is actually fantastic. You can see a 1-inch LCD display on its front, which will show your volume level, the sampling rate, the oversampling or non-oversampling working mode, plus the selected digital filter in case oversampling mode is selected. When it comes to controls, you have just a single USB Type-C input, which also powers the unit. It doesn't have a battery inside, as the wall internal space is occupied by its electronics. It does have a single headphone jack, and that is a 3.5 millimeter single-ended headphone jack. It doesn't have a balanced output. There is a button in the middle which will engage its display. A second press lets you choose the digital filter, and another press lets you choose the oversampling or non-oversampling working modes. You should know that in NOS mode, which is short for non-oversampling, all digital filters are disabled and you'll be hearing the original sample rate. Hybe offers four USB dongles, but this is the only one that ditched regular DAC chips in favor of much more interesting tech, which is Artwar Lada DAC tech, which uses 96 high precision uh, resistors, which are decoding uh, zeros and ones into an analog signal. Uh, just before that conversion stage happens, um, there is a powerful FPGA, MCU and two crystal clocks which are prepping and cleaning up the signal uh, just before it gets converted. The analog signal is then amplified by a single OPA1652 uh, op amp which works as an output stage and then two OPA1622 op amps are working as headphone amplifiers. So it provides around uh, 100 milliwatts of power per channel, which is not a lot of power, but uh, believe me, it can power even a few desktop headphones. It doesn't have a battery inside, so everything is being occupied by uh, high quality electronics, and I cannot wait to know how this puppy sounds, so let's hit some eardrums. 
Moving forward to sound quality, first of all, I want to mention that I tried this one with a bunch of IEMs, with a few portable headphones, with a few desktop headphones, so I would have a better impression about its sound performance. Also tried it with my desktop PC, I tried it with a laptop, I tried it with an Android smart device, I tried it with my wife's iPhone, and although it worked great in all cases, with the iPhone it wasn't really the best match. When I was uh, going slightly louder than 25 out of uh, maximum 31 uh, volume levels, or when a powerful bass note will be hitting my eardrums, it will be distorting, or worse, it will be shutting down completely, as clearly the iPhone cannot provide a steady power delivery for this one. So it was not really made for iPhones, and if you are an iPhone user, then I would use a made for iPhone USB dongle like a Shining UA5, like Fio A5, which was specifically made for iPhone users. I didn't have the slightest issue uh, connecting this one to my Xiaomi smartphone. Uh, even at full power, it worked just fine with a pair of Meze Elite. It was not distorting, it was not shutting down, it worked just outstanding. And the same happened with my desktop PC, uh, with my laptop, and these are basically all its use cases. So it's either an uh, Android device, uh, it's a desktop PC or a laptop, and uh, these are basically all its use cases. I have already experienced that uh, Darwin architecture many times by now and that artwork goodness of Hybe and I can certainly say that it sounds much much closer to their RS6 uh, portable digital audio player than compared to their entry level RS2 digital audio player. So it's considerably warmer, richer sounding in the bass and mid range compared to RS2 for example. Um, it doesn't have any kind of digitals or listening fatigue, the treble is extended, it's quite clean, it's quite transparent, but it's never uh, adding any kind of brightness or digitals or listening fatigue, that will never happen with uh, this one. My main dock is also an Art Warlord dock, which is uh, called uh, Rokna Wave Dream Signature, and while it's much, much more expensive compared to this one, and it's much more technical sounding, I cannot deny that uh, these two share a very similar tonality, which is full bodied, which is uh, smooth sounding, which is very powerful, uh, which is kind of big sounding, quite holographic sounding, uh, with no listening fatigue, with any kind of digitals. It doesn't have uh, strong leading edges in the treble, so you can hear that treble extended, but uh, it's not biting, it's not sharp, you know, nothing like that. So you can listen to rock and electronica, metal music all day long and that wouldn't be really a problem with uh, this one. My sickness wasn't very kind to my ears, but after a two weeks pause, I was surprised by how well this one paired with uh, bright tilted headphones, with uh, bright tilted IMs, and I do believe that Haifamann Svanar is that kind of IM. It's a very good sounding IM, it's very clean, transparent, but it's a little hot sounding, so it's bright tilted you need a source to tame all that energy, all that information, and this one worked just outstanding. It was fully driving the Svanar, that one is quite hard to drive, but at around 25 out of 31 volume levels, it was fully driving the Svanar, and those sounded just outstanding with uh, this small dongle right here. The stock sound of Hybis FC6 can be described as organic, warm, quite airy sounding, to a point of becoming really battery smooth sounding. So there is a very good extension up top, there is uh, plenty of information in the top octave, but there is not a single trace of digitals of listening fatigue, as I was explaining to you before. Think about the sound of a really good art war duck, but without becoming technical sounding. So the tonality is definitely art war type of sound, so you can feel that basically immediately. It focuses mostly on the act of music listening, on putting you into a nirvana state, and it doesn't care so much about the technical performance. That's what I'm getting with the FC6. Although I never felt that it really lacks resolution or detail retrieval, that didn't happen with this one. If you'll be using uh, planar headphones like Meze Elite, like uh, Odyssey LCD5, like Kenneton Rogner, like um, Elisletich Charybdis, it will be driving them pretty nicely at max volume, but please don't expect ultimate levels of control, don't expect that 3D holography, that super big sound, 
don't expect that powerful slam with the base. Uh, simply it cannot provide that. It's so small and of course the power output is not that amazing uh, for planar headphones. Although it can work pretty nicely with a few dynamic headphones like Kinerton Valley, like LZH Mania, it worked really nice with those, uh, even with Apos Caspian, with many more as well. There is a gentle beautifying filter applied on top while listening to music via this one. So this is not uh, ultra linear, this is not ultra honest, you know, this is not straight as line in terms of frequency response. It's not boring, it's not lean sounding, but after a while I actually appreciate this kind of sound because Linearity doesn't sound so interesting or captivating or eye-opening after, you know, after a while. Sometimes this thing feels like a time machine reminding you about the good times uh, when you cared a lot more for new albums, for music and not so much for, you know, technicalities. So it will not impress so much a hardcore audiophile. But the thing that impressed me from the get-go was uh, its dynamics and transients, especially with ultra-sensitive headphones, with IMs. This thing will pound, it has a very good kick in the bass. Uh, the bass feels visceral, it feels elevated, there is slightly more energy in the mid-bass and you can feel that immediately. And that will be felt not only with IMs, but also with desktop headphones. It can work as a cure with uh, entry to mid-level high for my headphones, just infusing a little bit more fullness in the bass and mid-range while calming the top octave. So it worked really great with entry-level and mid-level high for my headphones. While the mid-range felt uh, denser and fuller bodied compared to competitor USB dongles, it never felt uh, loose or out of control. It was always tight, tightly controlled yet battery smooth, you know, attaching me emotionally to the music that I was uh, listening. For You by Julia Stone felt uh, like eating pudding with uh, extra cream, it felt extra sweet, extra warm, you know, extra juicy, especially with a pair of Mesilit. Everything felt a little bit over the top, you know, too much warmth and too much uh, sweetness, but uh, it actually added to the sense of being there instead of uh, listening to music in a corner, so it added to the uh, experience in a way. The treble felt extended but not uh, super extended in the top octave, so it lacked a little bit of spark, it lacked some bite and some sharpness, uh, making hard trebles much much easier to swallow. I feel that the snare drums uh, lacked some energy, they didn't sound so punchy, so alive, but at the same time it was uh, much easier to listen to bright recordings, to bright tilted headphones, that wasn't really a problem anymore. I didn't feel that some information was lacking in the treble, all that felt still quite, uh, you know, quite detailed, uh, quite transparent, but I feel that the energy in the treble was not uh, bothersome, so it was not adding sharpness or that kind of ringing. So in my opinion, this is not a hit or miss type of treble, this is a high quality type of treble, because you are getting plenty of information, but you're not getting uh, extra ringing, extra sharpness in the treble. If you are a treble head and if you need a little bit more energy, more information in the treble, you can swap that uh, non oversampling filter with uh, oversampling filter and you can engage that fast normal digital filter, which makes everything a little bit more crisp, faster sounding and slightly more transparent and clean sounding. Power-wise, it drove a bunch of IMs, even super hard to drive ones like Hyphen Swanar, which definitely need a little bit more power. It even worked with a few desktop headphones like Apos Caspian, Kineton Valley, even with a few Planar headphones, even if I was sometimes maxed out. So it worked nice with Mez Elite, uh, with Elzetich Caribdis, with uh, Kineton Rognir. Sometimes I was maxed out, but I was surprised that uh, dynamics were not going lower, I felt that the bass was not limiting its performance in any way, it was not lightweight, I didn't feel that uh, the sound was harder or that the unit was clipping in any way, that's really great. At max power it was a little hotter to the touch, but not as much as to burn a hole in my pocket. It was definitely a little warmer to the touch, but that wouldn't be really a problem or damaging its internal components. Uh, with IMs it sounded just outstanding, even with ultra sensitive IMs uh, it was not bringing forward any kind of uh, noise, so it doesn't have any kind of hiss or noise floor, that will not happen, so this is a very IM friendly unit, you can use 
uh, your entire IAM collection of RMM with a unit like this. All in all, it will not challenge uh, bigger digital audio players in terms of power output. It doesn't have that super powerful kick in the bass. It doesn't have that headroom and power delivery. It doesn't have a lot of power in general, but it doesn't mean that it cannot drive you know, a bunch of IMs or a few uh, ultra sensitive uh, headphones, even desktop headphones. In a nutshell, this is not a perfect DAP replacement. At this point, it doesn't work well with iPhones. It doesn't have an internal battery, so it will be draining the battery of your smartphone. It doesn't have a balanced output and it doesn't have a lot of power on tap. With all that said, this is by far the most fun sounding little gizmo that I have tried up to this point. Absolutely outstanding sounding. It's like having a tiny little rock duck in a pocket. So it's so natural, it's so organic. It's so smooth sounding and you can forget completely about any kind of brightness or listening fatigue. It sounds like real music and I hope that uh, Darwin architecture will move forward. I hope that it will succeed because there is enough coolness factor and there is enough novelty with uh, this one. This is pretty much it. Thanks guys for watching. Thanks for supporting. This is Sando and I'll see you on the other side. Cheers.